Continuing with our medication series, today we're looking at glucagon-like peptide 1 agonists, or GLP-1s. GLP-1s are a type of hormone your body produces naturally after you eat food, and this class of hormones are known as incretins. GLP-1s help to slow the transit of food through your digestive tract, and help give you feelings of fullness after eating, so essentially tell you you don't need to eat anymore. We call this satiety. A GLP-1 medication is an injectable therapy. The very first GLP-1 therapies were daily injections, sometimes needing to be twice a day. However, over recent years, these medications have become more potent, and therefore the hormone lasts longer in your body once injected. Therefore, newer preparations only need to be injected once a week. GLP-1s are mostly used in type 2 diabetes and come by many different names and brands. As a simple guide, they tend to end in tide, such as things like exenatide, liraglutide, lixizenatide, dulaglutide, and the most recent, semaglutide. Benefits are using GLP-1 therapy. GLP-1s are quite effective at lowering your glucose levels. You can expect a drop in your HbA1c by 1-2% to in old money, which equates to about an 11 or 22 millimole per mole drop. But GLP-1s have several benefits extending beyond glucose. Because GLP-1s slow the digestion and absorption of food, they help to reduce the post-meal glucose levels you might see after eating a carbohydrate-containing meal, because essentially you have less carbohydrate entering your body at any given time. Also, because GLP-1s are a natural hormone to do with satiety, you actually feel more full after eating and generally day to day. Therefore, they have a very good weight loss effect, particularly with the newer preparations. In fact, the newer preparations such as semaglutide, you can expect to lose up to 7 kilograms, which is about 1 stone if you're based in the UK. Some types of these medications even have beneficial effects to your cardiovascular system, so it really extends beyond the realms of just diabetes, although cardiovascular health and diabetes are always intrinsically linked. Finally, GLP-1s produce a low risk of hypoglycemia, which are low blood glucose levels. Therefore, you don't have to test your glucose levels when taking this medication. Negatives and side effects of GLP-1 therapy. There are some downsides though. The most common side effect is people feel sick and nauseous. You can also get some gastrointestinal discomfort, which can be quite upsetting for some people. However, some health professionals will argue that if you're experiencing a little bit of nausea and some gastrointestinal discomfort, it shows you're a responder to the medication and you should persist with it and see if the symptoms start to subside over time. However, if they do not start to subside over a long period, it might be that we need to reduce the dose or find an alternative. In severe cases, once starting GLP-1 therapy, you might experience severe diarrhea or vomiting, in which case this would be an indication to stop the medication when not to use GLP-1 therapy. Like most diabetes medication, caution needs to be practiced if you have renal impairment. The newer preparations, to be fair, can be used well into advanced renal disease, but caution should probably still be practiced. If you suffer with pancreatic problems, endocrine neoplasms, or thyroid cancer, this could be a reason to stop the medication. There is also a small risk of developing gallstones or gallbladder issues, or even going into diabetic ketoacidosis, particularly in type 1 diabetes where these medications are sometimes used. Finally, there is a small risk of worsening retinopathy, which is damage to the eyes, when taking GLP-1 therapy. Of course, your diabetes team and your doctors can talk to you in further detail about the risks. And that's it, everybody. That's GLP-1 therapy. Again, we always stress with these videos, this is not recommendations about whether you should take the medications or not. It's clearly just highlighting how they work and some of the pros and cons. If you have further concerns, time with your diabetes team or your doctor as soon as possible and discuss it further with them.